Hi everyone! Today we are going to be working on this 60s to 70s style vintage session that a lot of you have been waiting for and asking about. So I'm excited to finally be working through it with you guys and hopefully this answers some questions you've had. So without further ado, let's get started. So this one Let's go ahead and enter develop mode and wait for the pretty rainbow beach ball to spin on my computer. And this is the edit. I'm going to reset it. That rhymed. And we're going over to my favorite preset. As you heard in the last video, this is the only preset I use for the most part. It's probably 90% of the time since this time last year. Actually, it's probably closer to 100 because I pretty much always use it. So I'm upping the exposure. Obviously, the orange is looking completely terrible. I'm gonna get rid of it by 50 to start with. I'm going to up the overall warmth just a tad and give some green tint. I'm going to up the blacks and the shadows, get rid of the contrast. I think I'll take it up to one and keep taking it up a bit. There's still a bit of orange, which could be reading as red, so I'm going to get rid of the red. Yep, you see that red as orange. Red, red as orange. I hope that makes sense. Or vice versa. It, I'm getting lost in my own thought. Anyway, the blue is way too vibrant. Getting rid of that, also bringing it a bit to the teal side. Getting rid of it a little more. And, oh, green. Always get rid of that for the most part. The crop. This is my <clears throat> trick, which is kind of a, not that great of a trick, which is getting a large piece of upholstery fabric from, you know, your generic craft or fabric store. This one, I thought it was pretty cool, kind of went with the 70s vibe. Um, and yeah, it's, it's kind of a cool trick to use if you don't have like an actual studio setup or you don't want to deal with seamless paper or whatever. So that's pretty close to, I think, how I had it. Um, the orange, I might actually take it a little further to the yellow side, just a tad and get rid of it a little more. And so there's before. Here's what I'm pretty much done with. Let me bring that crop in just a tad. And up the blacks a little. Less contrast even more. And I think we're probably good. And just for the record, I, do, I recommend avoiding upping the exposure so much by over a stop. Um, because it does give the shadows quite a bit of grain. So luckily I'm not really planning on putting this picture anywhere huge printed, but um, just for the record, you should try to get better exposure to begin with. Um, but this is kind of how I do things, and um, I, I think it looks fine for the purposes I'm using it for. But if this was a major... Uh, publication, print publication shoot, I would probably try to avoid getting such graininess in the shadows. All right, moving on. Okay, we're going to reset this. So the first thing I see when I'm looking at this picture, just to approach it from a bit of an analytical standpoint, is that the greens are looking very yellow to me. The whole image is kind of has this warmth to it. Um, not necessarily everywhere, but Everything is warmer than I'd like it to be. So the first thing I'm going to do, apply the preset. Then, then I am going to up the exposure and get rid of a lot of that orange. That might be too much, but you can always go back to it. Um, globally, I'm going to desaturate it by eh, 10. And I'm going to go to the green. So you see this preset actually made the greens a lot cooler, which is good. 
I'm going to desaturate them a bit and sometimes greens read as yellow and vice versa. Well, actually, I don't know about vice versa, but you get the point. Um, still looking way too dark. Decrease the contrast of the blacks and the shadows. Even though I said it was too warm before, since I got rid of some of the orange, I'm going to bring back a bit of that warmth. And I'm also going to get rid of some of the vibrance. I want this to just be a very muted, cool look. And I'm actually going, I'm kind of contradicting myself, but once I apply the preset, uh, I take some steps backwards. So I'm going to shift the greens back over to yellow and continue to desaturate them. And then going to also bring back a little bit of the orange and see what happens. Up the highlights a bit. A little too far. Get rid of some of the clarity. Maybe just 10. And I think I want it to be even more desaturated. I think I might give it just two of the default red shadow tones. Maybe five. I think I'll go with three. I know these seem so subtle, but it's, it's kind of the way I do things. I'm going to spin it around to see how it looks from farther away or different perspectives. And one thing I am noticing is that there's like a bit of teal coming up in some of the shadows and some blue. I'm just going to go ahead and get rid of that. And maybe a little less green. I know I'm shoving it like all the way down. That's kind of the look I want it to have. So yeah, went from that to that. And you can see how it still does look cooler than it started with even though I added some back some of the warmth but that's how I like to do it I like to um, pull it way back because that's my initial observation and then add it back as I see fit okay uh, maybe one tint of green I know that probably doesn't look like anything to you guys but I go back and forth on these tiny little deliberations all right, this is a much different lighting scenario than I normally work with, but I'm really starting to explore harsh light, and it's pretty fun. And the cool part about it is that photos tend to look terrible when you haven't done anything to them with harsh light, but with some cool edits, you can really get it to a nice looking point. So, as usual, dropping those oranges. That might be a tiny bit too far. Eh, maybe not. I'm going to take it more to the yellow. A little bit of warmth overall back. Clone out this light. No one wants to see that. And the blues are looking very purple to me. First of all, teal. Then desaturate. More desaturation. And we're going to up the shadows a bit so you can see more of the detail in her face. Maybe give it a bit more warmth. Did I already take the green out? Yes, I did. And up the exposure even more. And I'm going to get rid of some of the red, which is kind of showing up in her shoes and a little on her face and shirt. And actually, since a lot of this is registering as red, I'm going to slide that even more to the orange side. I just love orange. Almost anyone you ask who's worked with me would tell you that I'm like, do you have anything orange or red? I'm just obsessed with warm earth tones. So that's where we ended up with this edit. Maybe a little bit of green tint. I can't decide if I like that. What about red shadows? I think I prefer the red shadows. And just so you know, the tint versus shadows, 
they kind of, the way I use them is kind of similar. You can make shadows any color within this spectrum and any level of saturation within that color. Um, and But I tend to just like it where it naturally sits on the red side. Um, but it kind of is similar to adding tint or adjusting the tint like sliding it over to this side a bit would have the same effect but sometimes I just play around with it because it is slightly different and um, I don't know I just like adding green tint and red shadow sometimes even though they might be canceling each other out all right might up the highlights just a tad no maybe the shadows that's what was bothering me more Okay, a little bit of global desaturation, and I think I'm happy. Before, after, before, after. All right, here's another harsh light situation, although it's much more um, soft overall. So. Way too dark and contrasty. Oops, I meant plus or one totally. Then get rid of the grain. Then get rid of oranges by let's say 40. Then some green tint, less contrast up the blacks and shadows. And I might even take it over to the cool side. and get rid of some of that clarity. I'm gonna spin it around. See, that was pretty quick. And even though there's these stripes, which I was playing with on purpose, I don't know, you can't really, they just kind of blend in nicely, especially with the edit. Before they were much more harsh, but by upping the overall levels, we get them to just kind of blend in in a, an attractive way. So there we go for that one. I think I'm happy. Now this image is the one I'm sure many of you have skipped to the video, through the video for this image. Um, it got tons of likes on many different platforms and I didn't expect it to, but that's how it works. So let's begin again. I should also note that because I'm working backwards, these edits might be just slightly different overall from how I um, did it the first time, but it's the same general process. The temperatures might just be slightly different or, you know, a little bit of difference in the cloning um, because that's hard to do exactly the same. But let's start. Get rid of the grain. I bet you guys could just predict what I'm saying at this point, which is kind of the whole intention of the video. That's the thing about Visco film. When you first apply it, I can imagine so many people just, I mean, including myself in the past, just getting it and being like, this is ugly, why does everyone like this so much? But it just takes so much fine tuning to get it to the point that you want it to be. Okay, um, there's some blue going on in the sky reflection. Do not like that. Getting rid of it as much as possible. If you desaturate it too much, it kind of looks, well in this case it actually looks nice, but um, sometimes it just looks overdone. And there's a bit of haze over her eye. That might just be something on the window, or it was a rainy day. My lens might have been a little wet, unfortunately. But let's see how we can fix this. So I'm going to go with the sharpness, increase sharpness, increase clarity, and just kind of brush it over that part of the eye. 
don't really care about the clarity of this part as much. It's you can just do a bit of brush over it, but um, it's more this pupil that we want the connection with. I'm gonna e increase the contrast, even more clarity. Too much clarity can look weird. Let's see how that looks from far away. I think that's good. There's this bit of uh, darkness under her eye that I'd like to try to get rid of. So as you can see, what I just did is I just um, switched from cloning to totally um, minus 100 in clarity and sharpness. Let's see how that looks. I think I'm happy with that. The eye does look kind of glisteny below it. Um, I think I might try removing that, getting it back, and then just focusing on this area. How does that look? I think that's good. So, as you noticed in the edit, um, these lights are not there. And this isn't a super tricky thing to get rid of, but it does take a bit of work. So I just cut away because this process was taking me a little while and I figured you didn't want to watch some boring clone efforts but um, we're getting there this also isn't even totally necessary for the photo but I thought that the lights kind of take away from just the overall uh, moodiness like why is there a pair of happy string lights back there? I'm going to go ahead and darken this area because I don't think it matters too much. I'm going to get rid of that highlight spot there. So see, if you hadn't seen me doing this already, you probably wouldn't think that this looks at all strange, but since you have, we need to make it look good. So I'm happy with that then. And this is very subtle, but I see a little bit of purple up here. I don't know if you can see that. It's like barely anything, but I'm going to use the color slider. And yeah, see when I really saturate it, you can see a bit of blips come up there but I'm going to just get rid of it. I'm also going to get rid of some of the green, which I see kind of in the background, and some of the yellow. So we have that really cool tone to the whole photo. And that's too much. And I would say that that is pretty close to where we want to be. Maybe some red shadows? I think just one. And then a little more green. And maybe minus one in the warmth. Back there. Okay, so there's that one. I'm sure you guys were all anxious to see it. Now you have, so there you go. All right, this is another one of my favorites. Um, oops, not increased reading. So that's what it looks like before, as we talked about in this photo. Um, there's a lot of warmth going on here. Even the orange looks way too yellowy orange for me. So we're going to reset.
Now I'm going to shift the orange by default, it's over to the yellow side. I'm gonna shift it back down and then desaturate by 20, maybe 23. Also, same for the red, maybe 16. And desaturate the greens over to the yellow just slightly. Desaturate yellows and then add back some overall warmth, global desaturation. And her skin is actually looking a little bit too pale right now, a little bit too magenta-y. So I might bring back some of the yellow and bring back some of the color. And I may have gone too far with this green desaturation. Okay, another very subtle thing pipe sticking out of the ground. Going to clone it with this spot. And this leaf, I mean, it's nature, but I'm going to get rid of it. And it's a tad bit tilted, so I'm going to slide it over this way. Just a bit. Let's see. Tilting is always a fun process to fix. I think that's accurate. Okay, I'm gonna get rid of a little more of the vibrance. That's where we started. That's where we are now. Maybe take it down just a notch and a little less contrast. And I'd say that's where I wanted to end up. This is one of my favorite techniques. Uh, it's actually kind of a variation on one of my favorite techniques, but um, nature framing, finding some cool leaves or branches, really anything um, that is just kind of begging to have a subject inside it and frame it. Uh, I just love that technique of putting subjects inside nature. In this case, she's kind of just ducking under it, but same idea. So this one started out way too dark. That was my fault. Um, I got really excited and didn't check my exposure before I started shooting. But that is not a huge problem. Going to desaturate orange by 30 to start. Maybe more, it looks like it needs it. Maybe 35. And the reds. Ooh, and the greens are way too cool and saturated. Desaturate yellows. And her eyes are very nice blue, but I'm um, going to drag that back a bit. And some global desaturation. This is looking a bit too cool to me still, so I'm going to drag these over even further. It's looking better. Exposure is still a little bit low. Her face is looking a little blotchy, so the simple solution is just to drag back the clarity a bit and then maybe do a softening brush on some of the areas on her face. I would do that. I would spend a little bit more time on that if I was really editing it thoroughly, but that's looking pretty good to me. Maybe an increase in the highlights. Oops, 1.33. I think that's pretty good. I don't think I want any red shadows. No. And I'd say we are Maybe with a little bit more orange desaturation, 
we're good. Yep. This was another very popular one. And preset 400H plus one, no grain, up the exposure by maybe three, minus 33, uh, take it down a little bit to the redder side. And let's contrast. Get rid of some of the warmth in the overall photo. And then see, this one is an easy one. Nice, easy lighting. Pretty much that's it. Um, maybe I, I changed my mind on the orange. We're going back up to the yellow side and a little bit more desaturated. All right, and then one thing, I do not like this little spot on the stairs. And the tricky thing when you're doing cloning like this is to line it up, obviously, and also Make sure that the darkness doesn't bleed into the clone, cloned section. So, I think that's just about it. Um, I hope you enjoyed this. And one thing I did want to say is I would like to do a question and answer video. So if you submit a question in the comments, I will be looking at those. I will answer anything to a certain extent and um, to the best of my ability uh, even if you just want to know how my last name is pronounced anyway send me your questions comment them whatever I will um, then follow up with a question and answer video thanks for stopping by make sure to subscribe and um, if you'd like to stay updated with my work Instagram is the best place to do that <laughs>